Welcome physics people. In this video today we'll be looking at the photoelectric effect investigation number two. We're looking at what happens to the photocurrent as the frequency of the incident light changes. So our dependent variable is the photocurrent, our independent variable is the frequency, our controlled variable is the intensity of the light, the cathode metal and the anode voltage. So the aim is to investigate what effect if any the incident light frequency has upon the generated photocurrent. Let's look at our investigation method. So first of all Step 1. Open the FET photoelectric effect simulator. Step 2. Select the sodium cathode. Step 3. Set light intensity 100%. Step 4. Set wavelength to 200 nanometers. Step 5. Select graph option 1, that is the current versus battery voltage graph. Step 6. Move anode voltage slider from full left to right. Step 7. Take picture of the graph generated using the picture tool. And step 8. Repeat steps 1 to 7 for wavelengths of 220 240, 260, and 280 nanometers. Let's now carry out this experiment using the FET photoelectric effect simulator. Here we are at the FET photoelectric simulator. Let's follow our steps. So step one was open up the FET simulator, done. Step two was to select the sodium cathode. We have the sodium metal cathode. Set the light intensity to 100%, that's already there. Set the wavelength to 200 nanometers. 200 nanometers puts it in the UV region. We want to select graph number one, and we can also select photons rather than light waves, whichever we like. So we've got graph number one, and move the anode from full left to full right. Very good. And we hit the picture button. We take a snapshot of that one. We now alter, as per our instruction, our wavelength to 220 nanometers. And we repeat left, right, and we snap a picture. We adjust that again to 240, left, right, take a picture. We adjust that again to 260. We adjust our anode voltage, left and right, take a picture. And finally, our final wavelength was 280 nanometers and we adjust our electrode potential, our anode potential, and take a picture. Let's now analyze these results. Here's our summary of results. So we can see as we're changing our wavelength from 200 nanometers to 220 to 240 to 260 to 280, there's definite changes happening in each of these five graphs. It's a summary of our results, starting at 200 nanometers and moving down to 280 nanometers in the wavelength. So first of all, it's more appropriate if we're comparing the photocurrent and the voltage of the anode against frequency rather than wavelength. So let's try and express each of these wavelengths as a frequency. We know the speed of light is equal to lambda times f. This is effectively the wave equation where our wave are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So f the frequency will equal the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So let's convert our 200 nanometers. It becomes 1.50 by 10 to the 15 hertz. Our 220 becomes 1.36 by 10 to the 15 hertz, and so forth for our 240, our 260, and our 280. So we now have our graph of photocurrent versus voltage anode, and we're looking at the different or various frequencies of light. So what similarities exist in each plot? Well, we notice that all the plots have a gradient of zero when the anode voltage is positive. And the main differences, well, there's an obvious difference here. The x-intercepts are different for all plots. Now, a little bit of theory explanation. In this investigation, we set the intensity of the light at 100%, and we kept it the same for every one of these frequencies. Just keep in mind that intensity really means the energy per area per time. However, as the energy of each photon changes with the frequency, which we'll learn in future lessons, E equals HF, the actual photocurrent will change. This produces a different maximum current for each frequency of light. So this is what happens in reality. However, notice that in many textbooks, there's a graph simplification. Many of the textbooks we'll look at will represent all frequencies of light as having the same maximum current. This is common in textbooks and also sometimes in the VCAR exam papers. Technically, such graphs should state that the light intensities have been altered to produce the same maximum current. So we have here our blue line, which is our high frequency, and our green line, which is our low frequency. 
Now from our previous results, we know that they would be separated with the maximum current. However, it's common to show both frequencies, high and low, at the same maximum current in positive voltage anode section. Conclusion from this particular investigation. The stopping voltage VS, so this is stopping voltage 1 and stopping voltage 2, hence the VS1, VS2. The stopping voltage increases with frequency, that is VS is proportional to the light frequency. The higher frequency has a higher stopping voltage than does the low frequency. The maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is proportional to the incident light frequency. So the EK max is proportional to the light frequency. And we know that because the stopping voltage is actually what we use to measure the EK, the kinetic energy maximum of the photoelectrons. So our findings again is the stopping voltage is proportional to light frequency, which informs us that the EK max of the photoelectrons are also proportional to light frequency. Thanks for watching this video on the photoelectric effect, looking at our second investigation with the FET simulator. If you're able, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.